Today is the start of week three and it's a training day. We've got back and biceps. When you're training back, you can prioritize different parts by varying your grip. So if you use an overhand grip, I find it works a little bit more my traps or the thickness of my back. If I use an underhand grip on like, you know, rows or pull downs, I'll work more my lats. So give that a go when you go to the gym. Another thing that I like to utilize when I'm doing pull, pulling movements, like on back, are my weight training straps. So your weakest link when it comes to pulling movements is gonna be your grip. So by neutralizing that, you can use the straps, wrap them around the bar, and it'll take all the strength away from your grip and place it all onto the strap so you're able to use either more weight or pull out more reps. And that's it, I'll see you at the gym. Our first exercise of the day is going to be reverse grip pull downs. You can use a normal pull down bar, but I like to use the contoured easy bar because I just find it a little bit easier on my wrists and my elbows and it's angled to isolate the lower lats. Keep your chest up and your lower back arced as you pull the bar down towards your chest. Keep your elbows as close to your torso as you bring them back as far behind you as possible and focus on pulling your shoulder blades together and hold that contraction for a moment and then slowly return the bar. The underhand grip will also develop the lower lat muscles, giving the appearance of thickness and fullness to that V-taper. Wide grip lat pull downs focus a little bit more on the width of the upper lats and uh, on the reverse grip, it's a little bit narrower than a traditional wide grip pull down. Right, what we're doing now is using the flexolate straps on this lap pull down. My bicep tendon's starting to play up a little bit, so I want to eliminate my grip strength altogether, which is what the flexolate straps do. So I've cinched them on the bar here. I put my hand from underneath, so that double-sided stitch in there is on the back of my hand, and then to just hold very slightly upon the strap. And as I'm pulling down, normally on the lap pull down, I'd pull my elbows back slightly, but uh, with these straps, I'm able to push forward and really isolate, isolate my lats. So next up is the incline bench dumbbell rows. We'll be doing three sets of around 15 repetitions. And this exercise is basically like a bent over row, but I just find that by you know, doing it on a bench, you're able to support the torso that little bit more. It'll eradicate any lower back movement or any lower back stress. So you can totally focus on your lats and your traps. So the exercise we're doing now is close grip pull-ups with the uh, legs elevated. The reason why, uh, the reason to this madness is because by having the legs elevated, I find that it's easier to, instead of pull right to the chest, to pull to the bottom of the lower, uh, lo lower chest, and it just hits a lot more lats. Not only that, you're really kind of working your, your abs as well, your core muscles. So, uh, you know, at this moment, we're just training abs once a week. I find this is a really good app exercise as well. So you're hitting your lats, hitting your abs at the same time. Perfect exercise to do if you're tight on time as well. OK, 
Okay, so I just done my second set on this uh, close grip pull up, so the legs elevated. It's the first time I've done this exercise for a long time. So if you give this a go, you might find that your abs are gonna totally fatigue before your lats do. That's okay. After you do this for a few weeks, your abs will really adapt to it and they'll get a lot stronger so you can feel uh, the movement and the fatigue in your lats a lot more. So you just have to pursue through it. As with any hard exercise, you might feel it in other muscles that you don't really want to focus on, but you keep going through it and you'll, you'll, you'll hit that targeted muscle. Much like when you do hanging leg raises for the first three or four weeks, you might just feel it solely in your uh, hip flexors. But you keep at it, your hip flexors will get stronger and you'll start to feel it throughout your ab section. For the last three exercises, we'll be shredding our biceps. So the first step is uh, alternate dumbbell curls of around three sets of 12 repetitions. So I'm starting out standing just to warm up and get the blood flow into the biceps, into the tendons, warm up those joints. And then I'll increase the weight and sit down for my working sets just to really isolate that muscle a little bit more and prevent too much swinging. So remember, on the alternating curls, I vary the number of reps on one side before I alternate to the other side. So generally I will do anywhere between one to five reps on one side before moving onto the other. And this technique, you know, just shocks the muscles just that little bit, keeps your body guessing, keeps the training interesting, just doing something a little bit different to what you've done the week before. So try to get a good range of motion with this movement by coming down as far as you can to fully elongate the muscle before you contract it. So when you're doing this exercise, the preacher dumbbell uh, curl, try to really turn your wrist as far as you can. The further you turn it around, the more you'll get that work, that peak of your bicep. So even at the bottom of the movement, really turn it as far as you can, and when you come up the top, just to really isolate the peak of your bicep. So as you fatigue, you can have a lifting partner help you get out some forced reps just to make sure that you finish strong. Uh, you, you really want to break down every muscle fiber that you've got left now. With this exercise, the difference with this is that uh, some people call it spider curls. So instead of using this uh, slope inside of the preacher bench, we use a vertical side. It's going to do two things. We're going to help really stretch out the bicep there. So some people say you can kind of fill in that gap there. A lot of the, a lot of the time it's genetics, but you can help extend the bicep there. But you get a really good contraction, that's what I like out of this. You don't have to go too heavy, you can really finish off by getting a lot of blood into the muscle. So what I'll do is just go back to back exercises for three sets. So I'll do as many reps with this hand, then this, back to this, back to my left, back to the right once more, and back to the left once more. So what I'm going to do now, um, I've got to do a radio interview for bodybuilding.com. I'm going to go and do that. Then I'm going to do my cardio. I've just had my post-workout shake. And uh, then I'm going to prepare for tomorrow. I'm losing my mind tomorrow. Come back and have a laugh as I'm confronted with the effects of a low-fat diet.